Uh, the first person I'd like to introduce is Dick Long. Dick Long is the CEO and founder of DUI, um, which started in 1963. He has been diving for over 67 years, and he is one of the earliest NAWI instructors, actually number 49. Our next presenter is Faith Ortiz. She's a former dive store owner, a charter boat operator, and also a former employee of DUI. And she's uh, one of the people that started DUI's demo days. Um, she's also uh, one of the developers of a lot of women's dive gear. Now she's an expedition leader and co-owner of Blue Green Expeditions, and she's a member of the Women's Hall of Fame. Our next presenter is Sally Warman. Uh, she, she is a Northeast wreck diver. Uh, she's a former dive master of the famous dive charter boat, the Wahoo. Um, it's a boat that's been written about in many books about diving the Andradoria. And she has uh, dove or dived the Andradoria 60 times and is one of the first women to dive the wreck. And again, she is also a Women's Diver Hall of Fame. Our next presenter is Jenna Walker. Uh, she learned to dive in the Pacific Northwest and definitely the water is cold there, so she needs dry suits. Um, and her personal dry suit right now is a CLX 450. Um, she is actually the dive safety officer at Oregon Coast Aquarium. Our next presenter is Rebecca Barto. Uh, she's a serious recreational diver. She's, she only dives in a dry suit regardless of her dive destination. And this includes going diving on both poles and of course everywhere in between. And our next presenter is Allison Vitsky Salman. Uh, she is an underwater photographer and a writer for print and online media outlets, including uh, publications like Alert Diver, Scuba Diver Magazine, and others. Uh, she is also the founder of pre and president of Dive Into the Pink. It's a nonprofit organization that raises money to fight cancer by going scuba diving. Uh, so with that, I'm going to uh, open this up to our presenters to uh, start <laughs> presenting. And Allison, it's it's your show. Okay. Um, well, I just want to say welcome to everybody. I'm really excited to be here. Um, this this really came as um, kind of a surprise to me because I started doing the math. Um, women's dry suits first came to being um, 25 years ago. Of course, women were diving dry before that, but the first dry suits created for women. I know that I rely on them um, pretty much every weekend and on occasion in between. Um, and I have taken it really for granted. And I realized um, there are a lot of us that, that just put on these amazing dry suits that fit well, that are created just for us. And we never thought about where they came from or when they came into being. Um, so I'm very excited to, to be here and to, to help um, present some of, of the material that will come up today. But I think the first place to start is with Faith Ortiz and Sally Warman. Um, they really give it to you straight about the origins of women's dry suits and, and where they came from and how they came into being. So Faith and Sally, take it away. I think you go first, Sally. I think you go first. Okay. <laughs> well, I got certified in 1978 in Long Island, New York, and of course it was cold water, and I sh quickly realized that I would need a dry suit if I wanted to do any type of long-term diving here. It took about until 1980, and at that time, uh, my dive shop owner said, oh, we can make you a custom dry suit. It's a Henderson. And that's actually a picture up there now of the Henderson. You'll see it was a sealed neoprene suit. And the only way you could inflate it with is with the hose, just like you have on your VC today. And that's how you deflated it as well. However, it took about five mailings back and forth to try to get it to fit me. When I first got it, the legs were too big, the arms were too big, the feet were so large that Keel O'Neill could fit in them. Finally, uh, Henderson asked me would I come down to New Jersey where they were located 
So I went down to New Jersey, 100 miles away, and I just stayed there until they actually were able to fit me into the dry suit. All of the men that were diving at the time, there were, on our boat, I was very lucky because Steve Belinda had a woman captain and my partner Mary Doe. So there were usually three women on the boat, but a lot of the other boats had no women at all. And I had suit envy because all of the other guys had name, big name, dry suits, et cetera. And by the early 90s, the whole crew of the Wahoo had DUI suits except me. So we actually went down to New Orleans to a DEMA show and Steve Belinda, the owner of the Wahoo said, come on, I'll get you to the DUI booth and we'll get you a DUI suit. You should get a DUI suit. So I went there and actually Dick Vaughn measured me. I don't know if you remember this, Dick, but he measured me and he said, we can't make it. Unfortunately, I was about a year or two too early for them to get involved with custom dry suits for women. But the types of things that I would run into on the boat would be some uh, trepidation by men divers to dive with a woman, and certainly a woman in Northeast diving in a dry suit. I remember this one time, a fellow came up from Georgia. He had talked to Steve ahead of time and said, I'm coming along, so I need a buddy. And his buddy, he said, don't worry, I'll put you with a good diver. So he came up, and we were diving the USS San Diego, which is a uh, World War I heavy battle cruiser and a very famous shipwreck in our area. Well, he came on the boat and Steve said he was diving with me. He looked, took one look at me and said, I'm not diving with her. So Steve said, if you don't dive with her, you're not diving. Well, to make a long story short, after he dove with me, he came up and he complimented me and things like that would happen. So there was some discrimination. And also, again, I had suit envy. It took about 16 years later. And that's when, uh, after I started diving in dry suits until DUI got involved with the dry suits. And I can proudly say today, I have three DUI suits. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Sally, the, when I was, for, I was a little bit after you. I started a year later and I got involved in wreck diving certainly significantly later than you. But I remember a lot of that same challenge. And one of the reasons I went on the Wahoo was because there were women, other women on the boat there, you know, like you and Mary and, and Janet. And, uh, it, you know, but it really came to light. And for me, you know, when I, when I became co-owner of a dive store in Massachusetts and, and I got really nervous because how am I supposed to keep people warm enough to dive, you know, up here? <laughs> and if half my customers, I can't put in a dry suit that fits, you know? And, uh, and at the time, it was kind of the very beginning of women's gear. But most, most manufacturers' idea of making it for women was to make it small and make it pink. You know, and that was, <laughs> what that was the solution. And, uh, and uh, you know, it, to the point where... Sorry about this, Allison, but, you know, I had a real aversion to paint, you know, because <laughs> these, these new doctors would come in there and show me this brand new BC, and they're like, look at this, it's for women, and I'm like, okay, well, what's different about it? How, what did you do to make it for women? Well, it's in pink. I'm like, no, <laughs> that is not what we're talking about, and uh, to the point where I must admit that I am a founding member of SAPS, which is, stands for Scuba Divers Against Pink Shit. <laughs> and I, I see a couple of other people in the uh, in the uh, audience here who who are members of that as well. So I had this big thing about it, and uh, and you know we were having some major challenges. And and even though we were doing being very successful at getting people in dry suits to do local diving, we were having a horrible time with women dry suits. And uh, and you know I only am, I can only say how glad I am that Dick Long thought to call me. Uh, you know, 27 years ago now. Uh, you know, before with, when I was being a pain in the neck uh, with DUI, you know, so I'll let him kind of uh, jump off to that, I think. Uh, what, what happened was I was having a staff meeting and we did a lot of stuff, but our major business then was offshore oil. And, and so I was having a staff meeting, uh, excuse me, offshore oil and military, 
much more than, than sport diving. Anyway, uh, I had a staff meeting and I said, does anyone have anything else to say before we break up? And my production manager says, yeah, I want to stop making suits for Northeast Scuba. I said, what do you mean, Northeast Scuba? They're one of our better customers. And, and he says, She's all, this woman is always asking me to change things. And, I, and, and every time I promise, okay, look, if I make this one more change, you won't ask for changes anymore. She says, yes, absolutely. I won't, I won't do that anymore. And today I've got two more suits she wants me to change. We can't make any money making all these changes like this. So therefore, I want to stop making suits for Northeast Scuba. And I said, nah, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I said, let me call her and you just hold on that for a while. So I called up Faith and I said, what's, what's, what's the story here? And she said, Dick, I have a lot of lady scuba divers. Not, they're, 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 they're divers in, in, in the strictest form of, of way, but the suits don't fit them. So I uh, called my production manager. I said, look, you're going to make those suits she wants. You make the changes on the suits she wants. And I'm buying me an airplane ticket. And I'm going to, um, to, to Boston. Denver's just north of Boston. So I got there. And, Faith, uh, and I asked Faith, I said, look, if you could have uh, a bunch of these ladies so I can see what they look like, you know, physically. Um, the women change in, in, in their, from one woman to another, they change more than men do. And also as they, as they mature, they, they change their shape more than men do. So, um, uh, it, 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 that's just a reality. So when I got there, I, uh, she, she had all these divers there. And, and so I started asking questions, uh, what, and besides all the obvious differences that the guys talk about, there's a lot of differences between men and women. Women, for instance, have narrower shoulders and they're thinner shoulders than men do. They have broader hips and bigger thighs than men do on average. Um, and the, the, for instance, the heels are narrower for women than they are for men. So the, at the time we had from extra small to double extra large and talls and shorts. So that, that gave us a, what I thought was a very broad section. Anyway, I made a number of suits and sent them back there and made parts of suits and sent them back there. Then I went back there several times and to the point that the, by, by now we're probably 50 or 60 ladies in this group and they started calling themselves Dick's Chicks. <laughs> and and not only that, but then they would start talking about, look, you make peace valves for or peace zippers for men. What are you going to do for for ladies? And they would just they would, would try to see how long it took to make me turn red. Uh, the answer is not very long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just they just beat me up something terrible, and I'm trying to keep a, a, a running a scientific thing here. Anyway, so <laughs> I ended up I ended up with. Well, rather than having, what, 14 or 15 different sizes, I ended up with 100 sizes for women. Uh, I had to throw all my numbers away, all my patterns away. I had to start from zero. And we, we have what we call grade rules. And my grade rule for women is two inches. So therefore, if anything changes by two inches, that changes the size. And so we ended up with 100 sizes for women. Not only do you have 100 sizes for women, but then you take a given size that comes closest to fit that person, and then you have to modify that because there's no two people alike. They all, they all change. I said, if that's true for women, it's also true for men. And I ended up with 120 sizes for men, and I used a three-inch grade rule on that. So, I mean, it, it opened a whole new world, and I had to approach the issues of how to fit people from a totally different angle. And, um, uh, and, and that started the process that led us to where we are today. Well, and I think the most important part of it to me was, first of all, finding somebody like you who was willing to partner with us to try to make this happen and didn't think I was just being a pain in the neck. And though I might have been that too, but you know, I mean, you know, but I because I was a little bit adamant about that, as you might imagine. And but no, also, she was very adamant about that. <laughs> okay, all right, maybe maybe more than a little bit. And uh, but also continuing to work through it and to stick with it, even when everybody else was saying, "Well, you know what? You're never going to make any money doing this. Women don't dive enough. It, you know, women don't do that kind of diving enough. You know, they just want dry suits because their boyfriends have them." You know, I mean, that kind of comment, it was not unusual. And 
and you stuck with it. And I will always appreciate that. And, but I think the best part about it is not only what it did for women, but what it did in general, is I think it changed the way people's expectations were about dry suits, that dry suits were supposed to fit you and were supposed to be functional and not just, you know, a bag that, you know, was, was you know, you, you poured yourself into, you know, and, and I know from, from the business side of it for our store, it made a huge impact because we ended up teaching 50% of our people minimum in dry suits and a much higher percentage of women. It was something like two thirds or more. And there are women on this call here um, that, you know, that in this presentation who are looking, looking at this, who are part of that group, you know, 25 years ago and got one of those first women's suits. And, uh, and we did more dry suit certifications than anyone in the country from our little store in Danvers, Massachusetts. And, and we're able to keep people diving because they were warm and comfortable. And it isn't just warm, it's also comfortable. You know, I think that's a big thing. And what do you, what do you think about that, Allison? Because I know that you have a personal perspective about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I guess I feel like um, this is going to, it might sound, I, I, everybody might not agree with this. I guess I always think that, in general, men are more fiddlers. So they're willing to get some gear, fiddle around with it, make it you know work however they need to make it work and it's more of an enjoyable situation for them but for me i want something that i'm going to put on and then i don't have to think about it again um i want i want it to to fit well and i want to be able to get in the water and enjoy my dive or do whatever job i'm doing and i don't i don't want to have to think about it again i just want it to be functional and i i have I mean, I'm obviously biased towards DUI. I own, I own a number of DUI suits. That's honestly because I think they, they fit the best. They fit women the best. Um, and it's because you put them on, you just don't have to think about them. They, you can get them however you want. You don't have to think about them. They just, they look good. They fit well. You can swim in them easily. You're very streamlined. They're just, they're great. So, and I mean, I, I, uh, I think back to the first dry suit that I had, which like Sally was a sealed neoprene suit, although it was, you know, for women, it was still a stock size for women. It was a little short for me. So, I mean, I'd have to hunch over, you know, when I was walking um, to, the, to the ocean with it. Um, and uh, it was more of a, a bag, but at least it was a bag that was intended to fit women, you know, so even something like that just shows you the, the evolution over time and how much better it is, um, how much easier it is to, to manipulate things in the water and to be able to, to get yourself from point A to point B. Well, you know, the fit, the fit of something is really important. Uh, if you have a big baggy thing, when, and, and the, let's face it, in the original dry suits, they were big baggy things. In fact, we used to call them trash bags. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, that, uh, the, just the kicking your legs, the moving of your arms. Uh, mm -hmm. If you've got a baggy thing around you, it, it restricts everything. And there are lots of very intelligent, gifted uh, women scientists who aren't very big, which means they get very cold very fast. And my job my job, to be honest with you, is to, is, is, is to make them functional. And, and, and I take great pride in that. They, they are divers and, and they have something to contribute. Well, if they can't stay in the water, they can't contribute. So therefore, that's why I'm there. That's, that's, my, that's my charge. That's my goal. That's my purpose in life. Well, you know, the one thing I didn't bring up was the, the drag. Um, you know, and I've seen different with different dry suits, but you can definitely, when you don't have something that really fits you properly, drag on the surface, drag in the water. It uh, makes for a really uncomfortable dive. And it, I, I know that from my standpoint, it makes, makes everything less functional, makes me less able to concentrate on, on taking images or taking note of what's happening around me so I can go home and write about it. I can't, I can't work as effectively. You know, many people talk about drag, but in reality, what, what, what happens there is the crotch in the suit hangs down. The result is when the person has to kick, they have to kick and move that web that's between their legs. And, and people 
define that as being drag, when in reality, it's, it's much more resistance of the suit to your movement than it is drag in the water. Because the, the truth is, you're, you're already, when you got your tanks and everything else there, that, that's a lot of drag. <laughs> a lot of drag. So it's, it's more resistance to your body movement. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a picky. <laughs> Well, it's, we have at least one scientist here on, on this panel who uh, has been using DUI from the beginning, right? Yeah, from the very start. So I currently work at the Oregon Coast Aquarium, but I learned to dive in Anacortes, Washington, working with abalone. And I did all of that in a two-piece, actually not a two-piece, a one-piece seven millimeter wetsuit and quickly realized I needed, yeah, I quickly realized I needed a dry suit. And I got certified, I got my dry suit cert in a suit that was not a DUI. It was relatively uncomfortable. I kind of worked through it, but it just, it clearly was not a great option for me. And then when I found my way to Oregon Coast, uh, there was actually a demo tour going on at the time. They have partnered with the aquarium for over 10 years. Um, and I got fitted in a suit there and ended up buying one immediately thereafter. And I actually have been diving that original suit for over seven years which has been amazing. And behind me, at least I can go the right way. This is um, Orford Reef, which is a comparison area for Redfish Fox Marine <coughs> Reserve. It's a place we do science in all the time offshore in the summer when it upwells. It's 44 degrees. And we're doing transects that take over an hour in the water for us to do. And knowing that I have a suit that fits, I can snap dry gloves on it immediately. Honestly, this whole conversation, I've learned how much I took that for granted <laughs> because it was never a question for me. Day one, there was a suit that fit me. I had no idea how much background had gone into the fight for this. So I'm just truly grateful for all the women that stood before me and sort of created that foundation for the up and coming next group of strong women divers. It's pretty awesome. And it's been fun too to share at the aquarium. We had a I guess snorkel program and a guest dive program and DUI graciously helped us out with some suits for that. And we were putting young girls as young as eight year in the water. And our exhibits are 50 degrees. So we're convincing eight year old girls that dry suits are fun. And that <laughs> they're learning how to put on a neck seal for the first time and hop in the water. And they stay warm. We have to kick them out of the water. They want to stay. They don't want to leave. And it's because there's gear for them that fits that lets the job get done. So I'm very grateful for all the people on this call and all of the trailblazers and also all the female mentors I've had. Faith is one. And I know Diana Holling said at ESDS, Valerie was at the aquarium before me, Holly Bourbon at National Aquarium, who's another dive officer in the industry who really kind of set the bar so it's been kind of an honor to be able to follow all of these women and all of the work that's been done so that women can be successful in this industry awesome well i mean i think it's uh, i think it would be really good to to hear um from rebecca i thought um I thought that her presence on this call was really wonderful because the one thing that we're not talking about is women who do this recreationally and who choose to go dry. And um, I mean, I think, I think that's just absolutely fantastic because if you, if you go on vacation and it's warm water, sometimes you'll talk to people who'll be like, oh, you dive dry most of the year and they it's very difficult I think for people to wrap their heads around around it because it seems so daunting um, and talking to somebody like Rebecca shows that it is really for everybody not because of Rebecca just because she chose to do it because she feels like it's just a better way to dive yeah I started diving um, in uh, I got my certification in uh, uh, Saipan and Palau and I went there because my son was working there and um, I loved it, much to my husband's chagrin. And, um, and uh, I knew I wanted to continue to dive and not just have this be a once in a year vacation thing. I live in Wisconsin. If you're gonna dive in Wisconsin, it's gonna be cold water. So um, I came back to Wisconsin and I started uh, diving in a seven mil suit 
um, and uh, took a lot of classes and certifications and then had the great fortune to go to a demo days. Um, and actually that weekend I was doing a deep certification. Um, so I went deep in a seven mil and I went deep in a dry suit and there was no looking back. I, I got measured and ordered one right away. Um, and I did continue for a while to uh, dive uh, wet in warmer water, but I, I, you know, I, I dive every single dive I can and I'm a small person, I would get cold. Um, and especially at the end of night dives, I'd often be a, a bit cold. Um, and I was diving with Faith in um, Oman and I saw her in her 3030 and was like, hmm, this might be a good solution. And so she measured me on the trip and I, uh, and I ordered it and um, I'm dry all the time. I, I just love my dry suits. Um, I look at people struggling to pull on those wet, smelly, wetsuits when they're on the boat and I'm I'm dry. I, I, I think the only time I've kind of regretted being dry is when I was in Cuba last year. Uh, we'd get back from a night dive and they the wonderful uh, crew would be there with hot towels and you know I really didn't need a hot towel <laughs> because I was perfectly comfortable. So but um, you know I, I just love my dry suit suits and um, it, it's made a huge difference for me. It's opened up the world. I've gone uh, traveling Arctic, Antarctica, uh, diving there, um, and very, very comfortable. Um, wow, I can't say enough about them. If you really want to dive, get a dry suit. <laughs> We're so lucky to, to have that option. I think about I think about that because for me, I was diving warm water. Um, it was an avid diver, but I lived in Boston, um, and I had gone through a cancer treatment and recovery. And I kept thinking, I, I'm not, I'm not ready to wait to go on vacation. I don't want to wait. I here I am surrounded by water. It's a little cold, um, but I've not thought about a dry suit. Why shouldn't I think about a dry suit? Um, I wound up getting certified. I was, I was a little hesitant about it. I got certified in a rental. Uh, it's again didn't fit me great, but it was still you know obviously made for women but it was the day after thanksgiving i think that air and water temperature were in the 40s and i just remember getting in the water and um the only place i felt cold was on my face everything else was completely fine and it was amazing i just remember i got out and i was like this is the best thing in the world this is and it it was life-changing I, I think i had ordered a custom suit within a year and um and now, I mean, I think we dive probably a lot more in cold water than we do in warm water. And like you, it's the same thing. You're not limited. You don't think about what warm water destination should I go to? What exotic? You can go anywhere. You can go anywhere you want to. Um, we're thinking, um, I work a lot with my husband and we're thinking a lot about all of our um, remote travel was canceled this year. So that was all of our assignment trips gone, you know, pretty much in one fell swoop. Um, and we were thinking, where can we go? What can we do to, to create stock this year? How are we going to make this work? And we realized we don't really need to go anywhere. We can throw our dry suits and gear in the truck and drive up the coast and go of California, Oregon, Washington. There's a whole world that's opened up to us simply because we have dry suits and dry suits that fit that we're comfortable in can work in so I think the one of the most important things about all of this that we've been mentioning is, and I hear from everybody is it isn't just that it fits but that it's comfortable yes. it's easy to wear it's easy to work with and and I think that's one of the things that uh, it, you know has changed the mindset that has changed you know before, uh, from 25 years ago is you know dry suits were for tough divers who are doing tough kinds of diving and only <laughs> professional divers really needed that only you know it, only if you were or deep wreck divers or cave divers, those are the only people, only those serious, crazy people needed, you know, dry suits. And now I think that with everything going on between, between the, uh, the suits that fit better and better materials and they're comfortable and well-made and they last longer and then just increasing exposure, you now have regular divers, regular people who just aren't doing this for a living, just having fun. Who are, who are diving and using dry suits. And I think that's the best part about it. You know, I, I'm not sure we could have 
I don't think either Dick or I felt that this is what we were kind of starting 25 plus years ago, <laughs> you know, uh, but it is kind of, I think, uh, part of the natural evolution of that. Yeah. That's a good part. I think it lets people be better divers. Mm -hmm. Well, being cold is miserable. I mean, uh, the, 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 more, the more you dive, the slower your metabolism will become, therefore, the less generate the heat you're generating. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the more experienced you are, the longer your air lasts, but also the colder you get. And mm -hmm. being cold is miserable. In fact, that's why I got in the business. I was diving in Monterey, and it was cold. And I mean, I even moved to San Diego to get warmer, but not that much warmer. It, 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 <laughs> Cold just hurts, and it just is miserable. It's just miserable. In fact, I remember in, in my wetsuit looking at my air gauge, wondering, you know, you know how soon is this air going to run out so I can get out of here? And it, it don't I just look now to see, hey, how much t more time do I have left before I have to go back? Well, remember, Dick, you also used to be a little smaller and skinnier. <laughs> Back then, quite so much. No, we're going there. And I'll put myself in that category too. <laughs> you know, I'll throw myself under that bus. <laughs> Faith, you know too much. <laughs> well, but you actually bring up a good point because the, the physiology aspect is really important in that, you know, the women get colder faster than men do. I mean, we, it's, it's physiology. You know, we, we don't have the muscle mass to generate heat that men do in general. And the certain, you know, the women are much more likely to vasoconstrict, therefore pulling heat from hands and extremity, other in the feet and extremities, and and concentrating that in the core, which means we're really good at surviving hypothermia, but we also feel cold much faster. And man, there is nothing nothing worse than being on a great dive and having to to shut it down because you're cold. You, you know, we we came up with a decompression tables are a mathematical calculation for the taking up and the giving off of gas. You all know that. Okay, we made what's called thermal guidelines, which, which tells you how much insulation you're gonna need for a given size of person, because it's the physical size, not, not gender, it's the physical size that has more to do with anything else. And the result is if you took the average male and the average female and the average, and they're both wearing the same kind of wetsuit, if the male wanted to know what the female felt like, he would have to be diving in water someplace around 7 to 10 degrees colder. Well, if you put him in 7 to 10 degrees colder, he's going to know all about that. And he's going to say, gee, sweetheart, look, I got you the same thing I have. What's, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, sir, is, is your <laughs> cranial capacity to identify what's going on here lacks a bit. Well, well I can speak. I can speak to being cold. Uh, for those of you who were able to get a DUI suit right away, it didn't happen for me because they weren't making them for women originally. And the dry suit I had, we actually called a variable volume wetsuit because oh, the zip seal God. wouldn't seal properly. <laughs> and, uh, I was kind of doing some <laughs> deep diving. And so- yeah, and consequently, what happened was the the decompression hanging was very cold. <laughs> yes. Well, my favorite part, though, is definitely the uh, old valve placement, you know, the uh, the hose on the chest like you had on that picture. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then mine, uh, I actually tried that one. That was my first time that I tried. But my first <laughs> time that I had, had an inlet valve on one boob and an egg box <laughs> valve on the other and man you should think about what it was like to vet the gas out of your suit of that okay it was, it was not pretty <laughs> it was not a pretty place <laughs> you know and uh and actually i tried dry suits for a couple of several dry suits like that when i first got certified and i gave up because they were just horrible i couldn't get them to fit they just were horrible to use and i would rather be cold and wet and something that at least fit me reasonably well than miserable in the dry suit until uh, Dick Long came along. And, uh, so, so wait, so these suits were, were too big too, right? Yes, so yes. They're yes. too big and then you've got all the air and I mean you're tr ascending and trying to vent the air? Yep, I actually, uh, I actually one time on a... Dave, what did you have to... 
Oh yeah, yeah, it was exactly <laughs> like that, Allison. Exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm very thankful to you all right now. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, we have a couple of other women on this on the on this that I recognize uh, as being part of that original group. So maybe be kind of fun to get their, their comments as well. And uh, it, it was it was a crazy time, and, and I can't say I would have ever thought that it would lead to all of this, but uh, I'm really glad it did. I just want to add from a recreational standpoint, if if um, you know. If, Diving in warm water and seeing the beautiful reefs and the beautiful fish is, is obviously fabulous. But you know, diving around an iceberg is something that is incredibly awesome. You need a dry suit to do it. Playing with, with seals <laughs> is an incredibly awesome thing to do, although you have to be careful they don't bite you too much so you don't get a hole in your suit. But there's so many more experiences you can have if you're in a dry suit. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the other thing is the reefs are incredibly rich in cold water environments. Um, I think part of that is because there's fewer people diving them. Part of it is just because the water is so nutrient rich. Um, you know, we, we work really hard um, to make sure that we get images that really showcase the incredible beauty of, of California, um, the kelp forests and all the amazing life that we have here. And it's because we want people to see it. We want that to be, to be something that they want to do. I think California for the most part can be done in a wetsuit, but it's so much better in a dry suit simply because you can, you, you're not worried about how long you've been down. We've done, you know, two, three hour long dives, no problem in dry suits without even thinking about it. Um, it's just, just is incredible to be able to do that and to, to show people, here's what, what you're not seeing because the water is a little colder than, you, than you'd like. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, having a dry suit and again, being comfortable, being able to get in and out of it easily, put it on, you know, frankly, as you said, Rebecca, in a lot of cases more easily than a wetsuit. I can, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I would put on a dry suit any day of the week and twice on Sunday rather than a seven mil. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's the most miserable experience ever. Or a wet wetsuit of any kind. Yes. Fair, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a lot of people on this call who can appreciate that <laughs> you know, from what I've seen. Well, you know, the other part about it that's funny is that I just remember it, it has changed a lot because now when I go places that are relatively warm and I'm wearing a dry suit, uh, my 3030 or even my TLS sometimes, it, you know, 20 years ago, I would do that and, uh, and people would look at me like I was insane. You know, and, and actually, even when I first went, my first dives in San Diego were in 95, uh, yeah, 95, 90, uh, 95, 96. And I remember going out there and on charter boat, I was on the Sand Dollar, which a few people on this call probably remember, yeah. and uh, out to the Channel Islands. And we were, it was myself and my husband and a bunch of people from Arizona. We just kind of took the last two spots on the boat. And they were diving in five mil suits. Oh no. Or or <laughs> some of them were diving in like a seven mil jacket or a seven mil farmer John, but not both. Just half of a suit. And I'm looking at what I'm like and we're getting our dry suits on. You would get the bomb. I know. We're we're putting our dry suits on and they're looking at us like we're from another planet. And uh, and the guides, the dive guides start telling you know the first dive, you know, first day you know, they're all back, but we didn't know it, but they were all back on the boat in 20 minutes. But no wonder, right? Because they, <laughs> they were wearing. And my husband and I are doing our dive and, you know, 60 minutes, you know, 75 minutes, boom, you know, come back up. And they're like, oh my God, you guys took a long time, but we have to hurry to the next dive site, you know? And so, and the whole trip, they were hurrying us because we were taking too long in the water. Well, I'm like, well, that's because you guys have the wrong stuff on. <laughs> okay, that's not my problem, you know? And, uh, and they were, and oh man, they were so, they got so upset with us at, at first. And then they realized, well, wait a minute, maybe these guys might know something. And we started talking about, well, you know, yeah, you could get one of these too, you know. 
And uh, and at the very least, would you at least wear the seven mil as a set? <laughs> you know, like, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, so, but things have changed. You don't see that in a boat anymore in San Diego, right? Not or, well. On the Channel Islands. I, been a you don't time. really see the top and bottom split between two people. I don't want to see that. <laughs> it was I don't want to see who's got the top and then, um, well, I mean, I'm curious because, I mean, Dick, so the, the patterns, have they changed at all? Are they the same? Is it the same? I know that the, we, we've seen a lot of like colors and patterns, like the, the visual patterns come, come out over the years. But I mean, how has the cut changed? Uh, actually, we constantly are working on new patterns. We're constantly working on new patterns. In fact, we now have a new computerized system. It took us five years to program it. But like, like I said, we started off with 100 uh, patterns for women. And then, then, you, then you would take a pattern you picked out that was closest to that person's size for their height and weight. Then, then what you would do would be modify. You add an inch here, take an inch out there. Today, we now have a new system that, in fact, uh, because of computers today, you can do that. Um, you, you, you have to take into consideration the material the suit's made out of, and then what the person's going to wear underneath it, and then the size of the person. Because it's not just the size of the person, it's what they're going to wear underneath it. Sure. And, and, and the, the whole idea is you, 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 you do what your mother told you to do, change your underwear often. You know? So, you, so you, you, you change the amount of underwear you're using based upon, one, the water temperature, and number two, what your exercise rate is. If you're going to be a photographer, you're sitting there waiting for a goby to put his head out of the hole so you can take his picture. You're not moving. Therefore, you're not generating heat. You need everything you can get on. Whereas if, if you're out there uh, chasing after something um, uh, or lobsters or whatnot, then you, you only need half the insulation in the same water. Same person, same water, same temperature. But the activity rate changes the, the insulation requirement. Most divers don't understand that, even yet now in, in dry suits. Uh, so really, uh, now what has occurred is uh, also the population changes. Um, for instance, in the military, every seven years, they have to change the sizes because the people are eating more food and the people are getting bigger. The people are getting bigger today. Uh, uh, except for Sally. Sally's not getting any bigger. No, no. Actually, COVID-19 is adding to that. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I bet the patterns have to change after COVID. <laughs> right. So, anyway, uh, we are constantly updating our patterns and constantly updating that uh, the, the computer program. Uh, uh, and as we learn, uh, we're constantly making uh, new experimental suits, new experimental uh, seam structure, because for us, uh, we guarantee this suit now to last for seven years. Um, we, 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 it's not uncommon to have a CF200 suit that is in the 15, 16 year old age. They come in and they want it repaired. And I'm saying, look, guy, you got a last room of migration, a few other things here. The guy says, hey, it's still watertight fix it <laughs> so uh, no no we we are constantly updating patterns they uh we're, we're making new patterns right now huh. literally right now we're making new patterns and i think that i think one of the key things to mention with that dick too is that uh, you know there were a lot of people besides uh you and i that uh, from dui you know who really made this all work you know whether it be Bob Stitton and Dion and then Dion and Dan, now Dan, you know, who all are doing these changes and making these updates all the time. So it's not a, you know, the, I may have been a little bit of the insta, I may have been the instigator in all of this, uh, but it's certainly not a, a, a one person or a two person thing. Uh, it, it, no, it's a constant thing. Uh, uh, and and uh, Pat uh, back there is, is, is running the production department now. We had John Boyer for years uh, being the uh, evangelist out in the field, uh, trying to convince people to uh, change. Uh, and uh, Bob Stenton obviously was the, the what, what I call the line guy. He's out there with the, with the curves and whatnot uh, in, in matching seams. Uh, and also we, we had people like Maria. 
Maria from back there in 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 Danvers. Yeah, there were a couple of pictures for of her that came up on those uh, old shots. Yeah. Yeah. No, she she she. In fact, is she was one of the reasons that brought me back there to start with, because you said, look, I have some ladies that don't uh, d that don't fit the hourglass, you know, hundred and ten pound thing, and. Uh, uh, you you were absolutely right, and and the result of that is what you've got today. And and to be honest with you, I, ladies want to look like ladies. They really do, and I take great pride <laughs> when they that. look like ladies. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to sound shallow, but that's the other thing. Is that... <laughs> we want to look good, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, it's it's. It's bad enough, isn't it? I mean, you get out of the water and you, you know, snot. <laughs> the, the big issue that I have not been able to solve yet is hair. Is hair. I mean, I mean, we can keep the rest of you dry, but we can't keep your hair dry. We just can't do that. And 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 the ladies just say, my, my, when my hair gets wet, you know, so um, I'm sorry, I, I can't tell you that one yet. And, and, and my wife is one of them. She's, she's got a lot of hair. <laughs> I'm good with the wet hair. It's just I wish it wouldn't go all over the place. But. Well. <laughs> it is what it is. It is. It's worth it. No, I, I got to ask, so Dick and Faith, um, I want to know what the craziest pattern is that you ever um that you ever made for people first of all a shape pattern like when we, when we started uh uh we were we had standard colors blue red white so on and so forth and then we would lay those patterns out then then uh uh my daughter who is much more graphically oriented than i am uh uh, came up with the the flames. If you remember the yellow flames, I do. And, and so therefore, she made me wear that first suit. And I must have been when I stepped out the deck. I was just you know wondering if everybody's looking. And and then we ended up uh, with what we call the Captain America suit with the red, white, and blue. <laughs> and I uh, and and I took it to Dima, and we ended up getting put on the front cover of Diver Magazine out of Britain. You know, uh, with the thing. So. And and today today we're experimenting now with even more colors, more uh, uh, really bright colors. Um, so and we're, when you're when you you make the patterns for those the patterns when you make a suit you also have to make make the pattern as well because for instance you, you can't have a standard pattern on a custom suit. The, the pattern has to fit the suit, or, or the, the colors you put on the suit have to fit. And and on, on, only a computer can do that. Uh, a human being, it would take hours and hours and hours to be able to to, to create a pattern to go in a custom-made suit. Because if you make the custom, if, if you make the suit fit the person, then you have to make the patterns fit the suit. And if, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. So, um, uh, in, in one of the issues we have is what kind of patterns do people want? And, and women, women are more sensitive to that than men are. Women are more sensitive to that than, than men are. And I'm, I'm always looking for, and, and I want to listen to ideas that people have. I don't care how crazy they are. Look, there's so many things we do today that, 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 that 20 years ago were, were insane. No, nobody would pay attention to you. Hey, you know, we've been the leader in this and I want to stay the leader. So therefore I want to hear what you think. I hear what, I want to hear what you want. Tell me, give me your wild ideas. Hey, the, the most thing I can say is I can't do it. But uh, it's, it's like when I went back to face, when I went back to see face, the people in my manufacturing site said, we can't do that. And I said, well, wait a minute, face got customers that want it, therefore we are gonna do it. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we are gonna do it. And by golly, we did. And all of you are the, are, are the, uh, the proof, the proof that we did do it. We did do it and, and, and we can do it again. We can do it again. You tell me what you want, and especially when it comes to the colors and whatnot, let me know what you want, and I'll I'll find it. Hey, Dick, I want to say one add one thing to that before we head over to questions, and that was uh, 
uh, for me, one of the, the most amazing things about uh, what we could do at, with DUI dry suits and the patterns and the custom designs and everything uh, was actually being able to fit uh, people who have with disabilities, uh, people who are mis uh, missing limbs, paraplegic, uh, quadriplegic in some cases, uh, you know, and and all the customization it takes to do that, and the fact that DUI would do that all the time, and really, I mean, it, it lose money on every suit they did like that, but but still did it because it was the right thing to do, and I was really proud to be a part of that, you know, and. Uh, uh, because I think, you know, that's something that DUI does not shoot its own horn very much on that. Uh, uh, I'll, do, uh, I'll do it for you there, Dick. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know? and, and it's like veterans that come back, that lost yeah, legs exactly. and arms. Uh, hey, guys, uh, if you could give up a leg for me, I can damn sure make a suit for you. There you go. That's, that's where I come from. So, and Allison, I know you want to go into questions, but before you do that, you got to tell us about Dive Into the Pink, because I think that bounce off some other questions, too. <laughs> you get to push that too. Oh, great. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, um, I'm a cancer survivor. And um, uh, like I said, I, I, when I finished my treatment for that, that was when I first started diving in cold water. That, that changed my life, um, obviously. Um, and what we do now is we, we um, run various uh, types of fundraising events that are intended to be sort of um, disguised as something fun, either underwater photo competitions or dive charters or expeditions or auctions of really cool gear um, and trips and stuff like that. And it's, it all um, goes to fund cancer research and patient support um, for 501c3 and uh, we don't take any money out of it. It's salary free. Um, so yeah, anyway, so that, that's, that's great. And uh, I will say DUI has been an amazing supporter of us um, over the years and essentially since the very first year. So. You know, my, my daughter won her pink Vespa scooter from one of your uh, projects. Nope, that was Diana Hollingshead, Dive for a Cure. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Yeah. She actually rode that pink Vespa to, to one, of our, uh, one of our events. I have uh, some very entertaining photos of her. In all yeah. I will say I also have pictures of that I, you know. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, we, you're not allowed to talk about those pictures, Allison. They exist. Many of us have them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's, questions. Okay, so <clears throat> I have a few questions. Um, and first of all, I'd just like to, I'm going to put a link up in here for everybody. Um, it's for mydrysuit.divedui.com because um, some of you had mentioned how looks are important. Um, and one of the difficult things uh, with some of our dry suits uh, is to figure out what you want your dry suit to look like. Um, so we have started developing a web page that lets you build out a dry suit. And so you can see the color combinations for what that suit will look like. Um, it's not fully finished, but it's enough there that you can start seeing the different overlay patterns and the colors and combinations that can be done. Uh, so one of the questions was um, uh, kind of working backwards here. Um, is there any chance of some of the dry suit material being more flexible? Uh, uh, okay, when you talk about flexible, there's, there's two parts to it. One of them is how well does it bend back and forth? That's flexibility. Uh, I, Another one is stretch. If it has stretch, for instance, CF200 material has stretch to it. And, and the result is that feels like it's more flexible, uh, but it's not necessarily more flexible. It's just the fact that it stretches. And therefore, when you raise your arms and whatnot, it moves with it. Therefore, it moves with you as opposed to being restrictive. Uh, as far as flexibility is concerned, we, the flexibility of the material is not nearly as important uh, of, of a restrictor of movement as is your underwear. For instance, uh, uh, when many people say, well, my suit doesn't fit right. Well, you know, uh, just been bring in your underwear, put your underwear on, and the guy tries to raise his arm and he can't raise his arm because the underwear is restrictive. So therefore, if, if you're looking at a, a lack of flexibility in the suit, look at the underwear first, look at the dry suit and under, uh, the, 
and then, then, then look at the dry suit and underwear combination, not just the dry suit by itself. Um, as far as, as flexibility is concerned, uh, some of the materials we have, like TLS and whatnot, you're not going to get anything much more flexible than that. But how the suit fits may have a great deal more to do with how you feel the flexibility is. And again, if I had that issue, I would look at the underwear first. Uh, like, for instance, if you get uh, S300, um, because that, that material will stretch in two different directions. And, and with that, you're going to feel a lot more freedom of movement than you are with a material that does not stretch. Right. So one of the things that um, we have is you have a combination of, as Dick was saying, is the undergarments and the material on top um, that can restrict the movement. Um, so we're always at DUI looking at and, and, and investigating new materials. Um, at this point in time, we haven't found anything that's lightweight, like a TLS material that is stretchy. Um, obviously, that combination would be great. Um, so one of the questions was, also going back to undergarments, um, what type of undergarment is worn under 3030? I'm gonna kind of answer this a little bit because um, this kind of is a, maybe just a general note to everybody. Um, personal um, temperature, uh, as far as like how cold you get is up to the individual. I, for example, wear a very thin undergarment compared to someone that's diving in the same water next to me. So I actually brought my dry suit to the Bahamas and dove. Um, I was, again, everyone gave me funny looks. Um, all I wore underneath my under or my dry suit was just a base layer. Uh, so really no thermal protection, but I was warmer than everybody else because I was not getting cold um, from the water temperature after a two hour long dive. So it's really up to your personal preference as far as like what uh, thermal protection that you wear underneath a dry suit. You gotta remember that what keeps you warm is the undergarments. What keeps you dry is the dry suit. Um, and then the other question was, uh, I think this has to do with our XM450 and the 250. Um, are we, is DUI looking into making a women's version of that undergarment? Because I know we make the, the uh, Dual Therm 300 in a women's pattern and also have that as a custom sized uh, undergarment. But are we looking into something for the XM450 in the future or 250 for women's? Uh, that's a, a Thinsulate garment. And uh, we have, to be honest with you, we haven't had that much of a call for it. If, if we have a call for something, we will look seriously at making it. Uh, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. We, we have, or I, the, the request for it haven't gotten to me. And uh, we, can, we, can, we can pick on Jack here because he's part of the sales crew. Uh, it, it, maybe, maybe he's keeping a secret from me because certainly if we get enough people that want it, we'll make it. Okay, so another question was about, um, so we have some, we have dry gloves, the zip, zip gloves. Um, and I know one of the questions is with women, they'll have smaller hands than me. Um, I'm kind of an extra large, long cadet type of glove. I fit into the larger size zip gloves. Some of the women have very small hands, but they want to have the dry glove uh, smaller to fit their hands. Right now, we currently stock a standard size dry glove that pretty much everybody in the industry goes with. Um, so I, I assume if a women's version or a smaller glove comes out, we would probably go with that. Again, it comes supply and demand type of thing. Let me answer that if I may. One of the issues you have in fingers, in fingers is the diameter of the fingers. When you get into small gloves, let's just say, say like gardening gloves that are made for women. When, as the glove becomes smaller, it also becomes smaller in diameter for the finger. And, but in the dry gloves, you need to have insulation on the outside of the finger. So what I did was to take, because I had a, a, a lady, she, she was actually a doctor, but she had very, very small fingers. So what I did was I took uh, a medium glove, and what I did then was fold the, the fingernail back. And it, it, if, if you use uh, the urethane adhesive that we use on, on seams, I folded the, it back so that what I ended up was short, fat fingers, if you will. Um, they, they would normally be fat for her, except for the insulation she wore underneath it. 
and and uh, she had a, a a knitted ski glove that she had that that fit her fingers. That was the link to the fingers was the link to her fingers. And when we pulled that back and, and cemented it down, she that gave her fing, uh, dry suit gloves that fit. And uh, and that 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 works by the, very well. By the way, uh, it's it's just not something that people, uh, not not many people know about that. Uh, but it, it it's not that difficult to do. And if someone wants to contact me uh, separately, I'll I would be more than happy to explain exactly how to do that and help them. I'll help them. Okay, we're going to get ready to to wrap this up and just to go back to some of the computer patterns and how things are changing. Um, those paper patterns that we have have moved into computer modules um, so we can do the sizing uh, more accurate and faster. Um, and at and just so you know, DUI, we are not sitting still as far as innovation goes. Uh, we're constantly working towards making a better product, offering more options. We want to give those choices to you, the divers. Um, so look for you know, incredible things to come in the future. Um, and I, and I, I, I just love the support that all, all the, our panel here has given us and, and their experience and, and the depth of which they, um, how often they dive and their influence in the dive community. So that's, that's great. So I'd like to thank Dick, Faith, Sally, Jenna, Rebecca, and, and Allison um, for everything you've done um, for today. And Make sure you check back next week. Uh, we'll send out a notice about uh, our next deep dive with DUI. Um, if you have any future topics that you'd like to have covered, um, please send those topics to support at divedui.com. I sent the link up on the chat area. So if you have any topics that you'd like to cover in the future, um, we can go over those. Um, so look for more stuff, including innovations, more stuff with in the history of scuba diving. So thank you all for coming back out and seeing us and we'll see you next week. Okay. Hey, thanks ladies. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having okay. me. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.